Allow me to reintroduce myself. 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 My name is DOC. Genesis our wing club. DOC. Genesis our wing club. DOC. Allow me to reintroduce myself. DOC. Genesis our wing club. DOC. Genesis our wing club. DOC. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Allow me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself. DOC. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is DOC. DOC. Genesis our wing club. DOC. DOC, Genesis our wing club. DOC, Genesis our wing club. DOC, Genesis our wing club. DOC. Greetings, 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 greetings. Greetings, 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 peace and power. I am Dr. Dennis Asar Winkler, a.k.a. Dr. Daw. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Doc in the Box. We're coming to reintroduce ourselves. Doc in the Box. I'm here with Sister Queen of B in the building. Peace, peace, peace. What's up, Sister Queen? What's up, Dr. Daw? How are you? I am doing fantastic, wonderful. You know, I, I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey, Black Boxers. Hey, everyone out there. It is a blessing to be in space tonight. And we got a lot to talk about. Relationships. Let's get it, Dr. Da. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. Those uh, you know, those laughs meant something. I, I don't He was like, oh, those laughs was coming strong. I, I, I just want to know what those laughs meant. But you said, let's get it. So what's popping? We talked about relationships, family, black love. This is going to be this is going to be the uh, topic for the season, right? Yes. <laughs> black love needs some help out here. Real talk. OK. All right. What you got for us, Sister Queen? You the one out here circulating said we need to talk about some black love. So what's you what you got? About black love. Well, you know mm -hmm. what? I wanted us to kind of explore Black relationships because it's important, especially mm -hmm. Black men and Black women. I hear a lot of chatter. You know, I hear chatter from the brothers. I hear from the sisters. I'm in some groups. I hear us talking and we're real disconnected. You know what I'm saying? We, we got to reconnect. And I think um, it's society. It's 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 trauma. It's a lot mm -hmm. of things. But we got to impact why, why we're not connecting. So that was, you know, that's one of the things I think is very, 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 very important. But we got other relationships. You know, we have um, our relationships sometimes with social media. Social mm -hmm. media is eating us alive. Mm. Um, I think in a lot of ways because it's it's not the truth. It's, it's fanatical. So we, this relationships purely in the black community, we want to explore those with our children, with our families. Everything is a relationship, don't you think? I I have a saying that I always say relationships are relationships are relationships and i say, and what i mean by mm. that is wow. often we struggle we, we, we start to focus on one relationship we focus okay. on our romantic relationship we focus on our a relationship with our job we focus on these various types of relationships and tend we tend to focus on one over the other many times we we segment them but what i've realized in my experience in my work and my you know is that once we when we suffer with one relationship, we tend to struggle with all relationships. And there are people who are good at relationships, and there are those who may be in the middle. And then there's many of us who really suffer at relationships. I remember I remember one time back in the day, uh, Doctor Wally Mumbu Rudy said a thing or two, and I really I, I had and what he said was this: He said if if someone's a leader. I'm talking about a leader, a social leader, a political Ooh. leader, a religious le leader, a leader in your community. You sh should look at his relationship with his significant other if it exists. And if it doesn't exist, it should tell you a thing. And I, I, I was struggling with that because at that time I was in an organization with a person who actually wasn't in a relationship. But quiet is kept. When I really reflected after being in that in that organization for some more time, I realized that person struggled with relationships, even as a leader in his organization. So what I'm saying, what am I saying? What I am saying is that after 
further reflected on that and actually through my own experience, I see we struggle in relationships if we struggle in relationships. Ooh, that's a lot. She said a lot. And you're right. If if you tend to not have a good relationship, say with your, your family. A lot I can of be wrong. Because a lot of times we say intimacy, you know, but even with your own family mm -hmm. or your own siblings, you tend to have not have good relationships with, with other folks neither, you know, or or even you have a hard time committing or being in relationship. So you got to know how to actually be in a relationship. And I think it first starts with family, don't you think? I Is think it does. Relationship? Yeah, I think it does start with family. And, and, and just to add to uh, what you were saying a little earlier is that this is this idea, this this idea. Well, I don't struggle in my relationships and I hear it all the time. I don't struggle in my relationships. Um, well, it's just with him or her, the romantic partner. I said, well, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, because that is the closest relationship that you have. And that is why you're saying that is the most difficult relationship. In fact, you might not have close relationships with anybody else, which is indicative that you struggle in relationships. And many time, times what happens is individuals who struggle with other relationships then begin to become over-dependent on their romantic relationship, which wears that other partner down. Because now mm -hmm. that person has to be the everything for this person because I don't do well in relationships. In fact, what we hear in our community many times and it's come popular is that I don't like people. I don't do people, you know, because, and, and that's what happens. And we say it all the time. It's the cool thing to say, but really is indicative of trauma. Ooh. You laugh. What you're laughing? What's happening? Ooh. I'm laughing because I hear it all the time. I don't do people. I even heard, I work with a lady. She said, I only do animals. I only do my dogs because they don't talk back and, and I, I just think that when someone says that they, it's something wrong, like, why do you only want to be with animals? But that's why do you saying. only want to be with animals? She, she only talks to a dog and, you know, she just don't mm -hmm. do people. So she loves dogs. She loves she has a lot of animals because she, she can communicate with them. And, you know, they don't talk back. They're loyal. And animals are humans, <laughs> you know. So um, when she said that, that threw me. But, yes, <laughs> I, I agree with you. You you are spot on, brother. Spot on. Well, I want to hear what you don't what you don't agree with, but uh, <laughs> what I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that um, in a lot of ways, you should the relationship you're in should be like a very cultivating a relationship that you cultivate that you you know mm -hmm. your intimate your intimate relationship should be important. It should be, I think, number one in your life, and sometimes. You know, one said that you should have relationships outside of that. You might just be good there. What's wrong with that? It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to take care of people. It takes a village and a community to keep even healthy relationships going. Once that person is gone, what do you do? Who do you who comes to the funeral? Who helps you out with the arrangements? Who helps you when you're sick? When that man is out of town or that woman is out of town, what happens? You become isolated by yourself, depressed, and it becomes really a, a, a saying, I well, let, let me just depend on this person. Uh, this this is my person, which mm -hmm. now wears that person down. And when that person's no longer there, what do you feel like? You know, you tend to not think that far. <laughs> you tend <laughs> to stay, <laughs> you, you tend to stay in a place with the relationship. You don't think mm -hmm. like, wow, they might not be here. That's something to say, because isolation brings on more stuff. Um, and if someone's not present, you like, no one likes me, then it's, it's some self-defeating beh behaviors will come in. So you're right. You, you should cultivate other relations, but you know, a lot of people say, you know, I focus on my man, a lot of women. That's our thing. I focus on my man, I make sure my man, my kids are good. And, and that's what's up. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't know if that's good. I don't know if it's bad. And you're a, and your community, man. but you're a community builder, right? Yeah. So if you're a community build, builder, that run relationship can't build communities. Mm. Mm. Wow. Well, then, if that's the case, then you still got to have a mate, too, that's open. Because a lot of, you know, sometimes you're in relationships and they're consuming. And your mate is like, listen, we don't need all these people. As long as it's me and you, we good. And so... You know, you, you don't want to cause static in your relationship. So you focus on, you know, it's, a, it's some insecurities out here too, bro. What does so, that mean? I mean? 
Huh? What does that mean? Like it's some, you know, it's made to when they get in a relationship. Listen, that's what we rocking with. I'm rocking with just that person. Mm -hmm. Um, nobody else. Like if you with somebody else, if you talk to other people, then you, you know, you you're going against our relationship. I don't want you talking to other men. Oh, I don't mm -hmm. want you other talking to other women. That happens a lot. That sounds like abuse. That sounds like abuse. Oh, that's abuse. Yes, mm. that's abuse. That's called control. That's called power. That's trying to maintain a person and, and, and control them. That's isolation is one of the one of the uh, uh, let's say houses or rooms in the abuse. The house of abuse is one of the spokes in the uh, wheel of abuse. Mm. Isolation. That's one of them. Oh, well, and yeah, then, 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 then we have to look at why would one want to isolate one? Why would I want to isolate this person? Because there's a level of, as you said, there's some insecurity going on. Yeah. And what, what is that doing? That's not serving that person. I mean, in some way, selfishly, but it's not serving you. And it's not serving your family who loves you. It's not serving the community who needs you. If we are about this revolutionary work that we speak about, that's, not enough that's inexcusable we have you know we, yeah we can't even excuse him or her who wants to isolate you and take you away from the community the the, the one who wants to um uh, uh elevate the community hmm. so what about folks who's not looking to elevate nothing listen there's a lot of us out here we ain't elevating a damn thing bro all mm -hmm. we're worrying about is living enjoying our life making sure mm -hmm. our kids are good you know everybody mm -hmm. Unfortunately, is not worried about the community. We're very, well, I would say, self-centered, mm -hmm. and not to a selfish point, but to you know, I'm hustling for me and mine. Well, if you that's know? what they want to do, and they both agree on it, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. If they agree, what well, we don't like people, we don't like people. We want to get in our own house, our time capsule, whatever it is. We want to be hermits, and this is how we're going to live. And they're both fine with it. Is I, what are you complaining about? But typically, there's one who wants to go and do things. And I think that's what I was hearing from you. What about those who, when I say I'm doing this liber liberatory work or I'm doing yeah. this business building work or I'm trying to go back to college or I'm trying to go out in, to a networking event or I'm trying to go out to the club? Or, I mean, I'm not saying that there should be no parameters in relationships, but the reality is if one is trying to control you in a way that he or she isolates you from your family, that is a form of abuse. Mm. And that's you have, you know, and, I, and I'm going to tell you something. And, you know, I'm transparent about self-esteem self -esteem and my self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, especially with women, and that's why I always say to you, Doug, like self-esteem needs to be taught in our community. Young girls need to get it early. If you're a father, mm -hmm. listen, put some self-esteem in your daughters. Because a lot of times, us as women, when we get men who are uh, very, uh, I would say, clingy or want you around all the time, we're like, yeah, somebody, you know, you, it, it feels... It fills that void when you really don't have a lot of self-esteem. Like you want to be up under that, un, up under this brother because he makes you feel good. But you're saying to a point that could be abusive. But to a lot of women, and I, I know males have self-esteem issues too, but I'm not a male. I got to talk about from a women's standpoint. Like we we like that. Real talk. Like, listen, this brother want me here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, so, mm -hmm. so is that abuse or is that just feeling good about being with your man? Well, if if again, if you uh, ag agree with this, it becomes. I mean, it's okay, but part of the you issue I find you have self esteem problems. You see what I'm saying? Okay, you got yeah, trauma. yes, but part of the what I'm getting to is part of the issue. Then lies that a lot of women do that, mm -hmm. but the reality is they don't really actually want to do that but they convince themselves and they try to convince others that that is what they want in fact they've lied to themselves so strongly that they really believe it um mm -hmm. i see that as a clinician that one week uh i'm like, like a lot of women will adapt to their partner and you'll see men do the same thing and then mm -hmm. they'll believe that is what i want or they'll convince themselves and try to forcefully convince others that it's okay and this is what they want but many times that's not what they want hmm, hmm. brother jalaji says sounds like codependency so what, what do you what do you think about that does it sound like is that like a codependent type joint like relationship when you you know your self-esteem is low 
You mm-hmm. want to, you want somebody to, to look at you and love on you. And your man is like, come here. And you like up under that. You want to be under that. Makes you feel good. It's like, um, it's like drugs. Really. So, so I've been trying to log into my account. So part of me, I was trying to double multitask, but nonetheless, I'll just sit here and focus on what you're saying. Right. Yeah, so, so I, I think, I absolutely think it's a level of codependency. Um, okay. especially when you shut up. When you acquiesce, when you silence yourself for someone else and what they want. In fact, what happens is some people have, are so used to being abused that they feel like anything that the other person wants is normal and what is expected. And if they don't, if they feel otherwise, that means there's something wrong with them. Why? In fact, to, to such a degree that, uh, I've had people and I work with people and they'll say, well, you know, if I just didn't question him about the young lady that he sent a naked picture to. So I shouldn't even ask him if I trusted him. And he told me that, you know, um, he just sent the naked picture because, uh, you know, it helped her and her emotions or something. Right. I'm making up some stuff, but this is real. This is not far fetched. This is not exaggerated, but something very something very similar to that. Well, he, all he was trying to do was help her feel good. And he sent her a naked picture and, you know, and he, you know, he was doing all of that type of thing. And why did I ask him? Why didn't I just trust him? And that is that codependent. What? Um, it, it gets to very extreme levels. And that is a recipe for abuse. So that's, that sounds like he's, he's doing, he's providing a service. Brother Josh said, that's just a good deed. <laughs> he didn't sleep with her. He did not sleep with her. No, I, I mean, I, I know he went over there and he and he did all of that. And I'm not being funny. I'm being I'm, I'm really um, concerned about that. And I want to highlight this because it goes on in our communities. And lots of times we don't even know that we're stuck in this cycle of this abusive person because abusive people uh, especially very insecure, abusive people who many people label narcissistic or what have you. These people are many cult leaders. In fact, there are many cult leaders because they just have you and maybe your family. But if they were to grow, they will become larger cult leaders. The goal of cult leaders is to maintain control. Mm-hmm. To gain and or and maintain control over you, your mind, your body, your spirit, and he or she will typically utilize all types of uh, uh, weaponry to accomplish that. That being uh, emotional abuse, that being physical abuse, that being intellectual abuse, that being uh, uh, financial abuse, that being abuse through religion that means abuse through all types of means well god said this and and and, and, and the person who's codependent falls in love with the person that they met because you understand we talk about this love bomb did you mention love bombing earlier Mm-mm. well th- this love bombing is a real thing because what love i do bomb? love bombing love when bombing. i come in and i learn from you queen oh look at queen queen what do you like what do you like? I know these other brothers ain't nothing, but what do you like? Oh, you like to go out to the movies on Fridays at three o'clock. So happenstance, I'm going to take you out to the movie on Fridays at three o'clock. And you like your you like you like your toes rubbed. Oh, you like your toes rubbed before you go to the movies. So I'm going to rub your toes before you go to the movies. And all these things that you tell you're telling me and many times not even realizes that realizing that this person is asking you these questions. And now he's becoming the person that you want him to be. And you're like, oh, he's just the perfect person. And once he gets you hooked or she gets you hooked, then they no longer are that person and they become the other person. And now you are addicted to that person. And now you are, you find it very difficult to leave that relationship, whatever it is, it's, it, 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 it can be anything. What do you like to eat? What do you like? What do you need? They find what you need. They find what you, they find your deficits or they find your self-esteem issues and they become that person that, you, that, that they become the person that listens to you. Ooh. And no one else has ever listened to me. 
like this. And now I'm addicted to it because this person gets me and nobody else in this world gets me from my perspective. But this person does. And hence, although he's hitting me or she's hitting me, although she is cheating on me or although he is cheating on me, I will ignore that and say that's not happening because I need this person. Wow. This person has made me feel like Holly Berry said, make me feel good. Hmm. That's like a drug. <laughs> That's the, wow. So in other words, you're meeting the representative, they're reeling people in, and then here you go. It's whole it's something whole new at the end. It's a it's a manipulator, a uh, person who is controlling. Wow. I think that's happened to me, Dr. Da. <laughs> Real talk. I think I think that's happened. So you're giving me some good tools. Ooh. So and this, what, huh? And I and this is why I tell people, people say, well, you never know. There's there's traits, there's ways that we can teach people to avoid these cues. The problem is we're so hurt, we want to feel good. Like, uh, what's her mm. name again? I said it earlier. Um, 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 Halle, um Berry. Halle Berry when she slept with the man in the movie, just make me feel good. And I just want to feel good. And I don't want to look at all these signs. I'm tired of checking things out. I'm tired of this because I feel good. Don't blow my high, brother Asa or sister queen when you warn me of things. Don't blow my high. Mm -hmm. Wow. I've hurt. I've been hurting so long. I've been hurting so long that I don't want to feel that hurt in pain. Some people take cocaine. Some people deal with homeboy and homegirl. Hmm. Well, some it's all a drug. Smoke. Yeah, it's yeah. all a drug. Wow. Uh, we got a lot on these relationships. I mean, and, and then what about the relationship that's really good, good? Uh, that you don't really have a controlling person, but they just really, really are into each other. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're saying that's a positive movement. That's not anything controlling. Because it's, it's people who out there who, you know, they go out once in a while, but they're really into each other. They do a lot with each other. You know what I'm saying? So what what, you, you're saying, what is about... That, is, is that something that's that's negative in relationships when you, you, you're, you're mate and you are best friends and you hang out together with your mate? Well, why, would, why would that be a problem, though? That's what I'm saying. So you're saying that's not, it's nothing bad about that. I mean, you, yeah. are, are you now? Let's keep in mind. I guess if we if we're still speaking to um, the not really dealing with other people and 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 really um, like siloed, it's just them. It's yes. like Bonnie and Clyde. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that can be okay. It doesn't necessarily mean it's abusive. They both can agree. Okay. But that, but I do still think that when we look at people, people need people. So there's something there to consider. Hmm. I mean, like, are you have two families and you're just going to ignore them? Like, really? Like, I mean, like all the time, all, all the time, always. And you're going to act like you don't have a mother across town and she doesn't have a mother across town. And, you, and you're going to act like you, you weren't at church and now you're just not dealing with the people at all anymore. And you're going to act mm -hmm. like you don't have a cousin that live right down the street from you. And, that you know, like, I mean, what's going on? What's well, you know, that's what they on? say when people get in a good relationship, they forget their whole, they forget their ecosystem. Like, oh, you always with him, or you always with us. You know what I'm saying? You forget yeah, your think, ecosystem. Yeah, that's that's a that's a part of this culture that doesn't serve us, and we begin to Ooh. believe in these nuclear families. And, and and see, now when you're talking about this thing on a political level, this thing that's an unhealthy relationship. Mm. And what I mean, it may serve you and him, but again, what happens when neither one of you are still there? Where is your support? When people like people, people like to help people to help them, not that people won't help them, but like, what does it look like the next 30 years, you and him, they are just going and doing. And next thing you know, something happens. Now you're going to have to go and ask for some help from some other human beings that now feel abandoned by you. Hmm. That is poor communication. That is poor relationships that like, like if you just cut everybody else off, once you get in a relationship, there's something there. There's something not really right. And when we mm. talk about a collective as a community at CC, and I'm also, I'm African Senate. I'm also, I also look at things, social politically, that is unhealthy, especially for people who are trying to rise above the conditions they find themselves in. Hmm. So we got some behaviors to clean up. 
because a lot of times people think that's really positive. Like, you know, I found somebody and, and we build in together, you know, like I, a guy, I found my king, you find your queen and we get ready to build and we rolling together. My but, wife and I are building together. Yes. But queen is also right here. She yeah, fussed me queen. out earlier, but she's still right here. You understand? Yes, yes. Look, so that's still a part of relationships, right? Right. So what I'm saying is also I it's think? so many so many community members, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is. is we we don't like the stress that goes along with relationships. Hmm. And as far as as long as this person gives me my dopamine hmm. in whatever form he or she can give it to me, I'm okay. You know, I look, I don't want to deal with mom because mom wants to treat me like I'm a child. And I don't want to deal with auntie because auntie, she she be she say too much, and I don't want to deal with uncle because you know I'm not saying yeah, it's, it's not some people that 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 you don't need to put some parameters up because there's a lot of unhealthy behaviors in our community. But I'm yeah. saying just for GP. Now, one day you have a whole crew, a whole village, your homegirls even, mm -hmm. and then you abandon them. And then once that relationship doesn't work, you come back to them again and yeah. act like that didn't happen. Now they're not going to trust you as much. And then you get in another relationship and ban abandon your homegirls again. Then they're going to be like, oh, OK, they have the right to feel away. I'm going to suggest that I'm going to argue that and I maintain that because mm -hmm. that is not how you do to anyone that you love. Just abandon them cold turkey. Hmm. And it doesn't mean that you're meaning it hurt them. But what I'm saying is relationships are very important. But that doesn't mean that romantic, quote unquote, relationship. That's part of the problem, the romance and coming from this Roman perspective. But the, the that's part of the major issue in this nuclear families that this society has taught us. But no, what strengthens relationships is your village. Mm. What happens when you're going through a struggle? Now you don't want to tell nobody who can okay. help you and her out when 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 y'all going through something. You don't have no big mama. You don't have no. You, 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 you know, you, you don't have no cousin. You don't have an uncle. You don't have a wise elder to talk to. So when I say from an African Senate perspective and just general practical perspective, it doesn't make healthy sense. I'm not saying there's not a, a, a ad line. Uh, was it? Um, ad, was it? Ad line? What? I'm, I'm losing words right now. It's getting a little late. Outlier uh, outlier out there that they totally everything happens right. They never need anybody else. And they both die on the same day. <laughs> That happens that. But 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 da, listen, when people get married, you know, you, you, said, that you said that happens. I no, I said maybe that happens. I don't know. Maybe well, that, well, they both died together. I, you know, I saw I, a, um, an older guy, a lady died, and his wife they were together a long time, like 40 years, and the wife died, and then he broke heart, he died like eight hours later. But you yeah. know, that, that hardly happens. So. Did they have family? <laughs> they had children. Yeah, they had children. Yeah, yeah. They had children. But um you know, but if you look at the Eurocentric system that we all live in, that's what we live. We live in a Western, we live in a Western civilization. Mm -hmm. And when we get married, you know, you, mm -hmm. you pledge to be one and be in space with, with, you know, be in space with your, your, your wife or husband. And that is really what people are feeling like I need to build with that person and everybody else, you know, they get in where they fit in until so you need them. And so that's what you're saying. Your brain was healthy. But I think a lot of times um, we are kind of conditioned or acculturated to, you know, to that union. It, it, it is it is where we should focus on. That should be your focus. That's you know? because we're struggling so much. And that's, I, I, I see what you're saying. We, we struggle yeah. so much in these relationships because, first and foremost, we haven't even learned to be in a relationship. Ooh. And hence, we, we, we relationships are so have been so traumatic for us that it's very difficult to focus on all these relationships at the same time because you're focusing, you're hyper-focused on making this one work. And I think many times we're looking at this from people who are little, people over 30, people getting closer to 40, people mm -hmm. who, who feel like their clock is running out, their time is running out, their, 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 their attractiveness is running out. Can I get a man? Can I get a woman? What's wrong with me? So what happens is that's that, that's that mindset. But I think we have to then ask the question, what is wrong with the culture that has us having these issues? 
it's always people we, 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 we've fallen into this idea get your education girl and worry about him later we go, go, go you know do this and do what? that i mean like and now you 35 and you were like i want to have a child and now you're saying well i ain't got but so much time and now yeah. you're just getting in all types of friends like relationships with people because somebody yeah. gave you poor advice and now it's really difficult to deal with people because you've become more set in your personality as you age. So now it's more difficult for you to mold and allow somebody to come in and where you can grow together, where your neural pathways can form. You are preaching, preaching, preaching. And I think that's something that is very powerful to say because, you know, us girls who go to college, you know, we go to college and we focus on our careers and, and, and getting where we need. When we look up, we 47. You know what I'm saying? And when you look up, listen, ain't, ain't nobody out there. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or we're very kind of like um, in our own lane. Everything is our way. We've been doing everything ourselves. And it's very hard to incorporate someone, like you said, set in your own ways. Yeah, so do you think some of that is why so many Black women are single? Um, of course, there's not a lot of men, too. We're going, we're going, the men pool is, is very low, let's be clear. But also, mm -hmm. I think our education has limited us in a lot of ways and escalated us in a lot of ways. Yeah, I tell I tell I tell sisters all the time, and it, and, and and I'm so I'm typically harder on the brothers, um, but I I have recently talked to some sisters that come to my group, and I say, see, the pro one of the problems I find is that y'all want to have a traditional man, but y'all don't want to operate in a traditional manner yourselves. <sighs> you want the man to open the car door. You want him to take out the trash. You want him to be the yep. buff man and carry the gun, but you want yep. him to sit down and shut up at your snap. You yep. want him to, you want to tell him how much education you got. You want to tell him you just, you know, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but what I'm saying is what I've noticed in those that I work with, and I'm very, I'm very friendly and kind with the sisters because I, I'll be honest, I understand. I mean, that I, 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 I'm frustrated when I hear the stories that these sisters tell, uh, tell me about these brothers out here, and that's why we also do men's groups here too to help develop these men who are not connected to their emotions to connect to their emotions so they can connect to their significant other. Mm. And, it's, and, and because we've been robbed of really being able to deal with those emotions in a way that we know that we can survive those emotions. So we just Ooh. want things to see silence, peace. I just want peace. Just leave me alone when I come home. You know, I just, you know, and that's cool sometimes. Like we need to balance it out, but yeah. it can't be all the time, right? And then the other thing that happens is uh, the sisters many times, and I'm, and I'm just going to keep it 100 and keep it funky, is that women have not learned to really treat men gently although we think that we, that they are that we are that they are doing it like mm -hmm. women can say anything to a man in their mind like, and they think it's no problem like they can shut up like they can just tell you like they can push you they can hit you they can say things to you that uh, no man could ever say to them not even closely say to them and it's supposed to be all right and that is why when that is that is why when I I I reflect. So you saying this to me. Now, how would that feel if I said that to you? So you really think that's women feel like that? Like we could say anything to men? No, women don't know that. Many women don't know that they say anything to men. They shut up, boy. Uh, 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 like, 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 it's like they tell you, go to the, go, go get that for me. Go get that for me. And, and like, if you, if you want to do the reverse, like, oh, go get that for me. It, it's like, you're my brute. Like here, here. Like, I mean, literally, we don't realize how it happens. And men sit there and breathe it in. And, it, and you know, and I'm not, you know, what I'm saying is women have not been taught that they have to control their emotions. Mm. Emotional emotions are important, right? They are important and they're friendly and it's good to feel them. But then what happens is, and I'm saying this is not always for all women. Some men haven't learned to control their emotions and some women cut off from their emotions. But I'm talking in general, in a general sense, mm -hmm. it's okay for you to start yelling and screaming. It is okay. And I got to sit there, but 
let me say something anywhere near close to that that's going to be a problem I'm, what i'm saying is it's a problem in the culture that has women being able to say and do almost anything to men and men being able to just cut off and act like they don't exist both of these are problems and we have to meet in the middle i'm talking about internally we have to work on ourselves to realize how women also i'm talking about black women even also need to reflect on how they talk and treat men. Whoa. That's and a it's big... so un unconscious. They don't mean no harm. They don't mean it. I'm telling you, we don't know because it's so it, it's so not talked about. And mm. I talked to my sisters, I talked to the sisters in the group about it, and they agree with me because they're doing the work and that you can say, boy, bye. Yeah, boy, bye. We let say me it. say, let me say, girl, bye. <laughs> oh my lord! You can say almost anything, and most yeah. men just just deal with it, and then they wow. blow up because men don't know how to always articulate their frustration, their emotion, how they felt at that moment. But then it begins to add up, mm. and then 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 he acts out of control, and then you say you acting like a girl. Ooh. And he's supposed to straighten up now. You know what? I hear this a lot. Wow. Yeah. He's right. like a little girl. Yeah. That he I, didn't have no daddy. And then you start dissecting him and uh, uh, then you start uh, pathologizing him and, and, yeah. and, and, and really diagnosing him. You see, he wow. ain't no daddy home. He got mommy issues and all that. And yes, he may have some. <laughs> and But there's probably some daddy issues with you. And also mommy and maybe mommy issues. And the fact that you have to continuously uh, 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 dissect and also uh, 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 diagnose this person, it feels good when a man, because sometimes men get insight from women because they've been to therapy, they know their emotions, and it feels good because he's you're introducing him to a new world. But at some point he feels pathologized and then he feels like he has to little be the little boy to you mm -hmm. because... Uh, you so great, and but at some point he like, damn, she keep telling me things about myself. But the reality is, damn, can I be right sometimes? Because then you get in a disagreement, and she going out, she going to wear him out. Wow, she going to wear him out because she has the emotional and the uh, the the verbal tools to do so in most yes. cases. Yes. Now yes. I like to say, look, I'm one of those brothers. I can go with you if you want. But the problem is, I know that I, you know. <laughs> Personally, <laughs> so if you want it, I don't bring want it on. It. I don't want I, no smoke. I had three sisters growing up. I don't want no smoke. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but I, but I don't try to hurt people's feelings. That's the thing. If mm -hmm. I wanted to hurt people's feelings, oh my god, I could be a beast. But mm -hmm. I ain't about hurting people's feelings. But that, because that it would be coming from that place of ego. Yes. And it did not mean I don't want to pull that goddamn trigger and smack the schnick out of you. Like, pow! I just want to smack you. You got what I'm trying to say? Look, you think, you 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 really think that I don't see this, and you think I don't see that. I'm talking about for men, women, relationships, but I just chill and let people do them. And, uh, you know, I, I bite it, I bite it, and I breathe it off because I understand that's part of the work. You understand? Yeah. I understand our community at a, is at a state of cultural crisis. Mm -hmm. Understand that we're dealing with a lot of trauma. Yes. And, and, the, and, the, and the biggest thing is the person on the side think that they know more. They think that they, that they, that whatever. And, you know, you got to sit in that if you really want to help. Let them think what they think. I ain't got to prove nothing to them, but they, they really think they think they think they know. But, you know, uh, maybe one day they'll learn. But, I, you know. Well, you psyching tonight. <laughs> That's what I would call it. Where you psychology in? You are throwing mm -hmm. it out there, but you, yeah, absolutely. You know what? I never thought it's almost like I'm on a couch. Well, I am on a couch, but it's 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 actually like I'm really on your couch because I never thought of we, we as women we say whatever we want to men. We do. Mm -hmm. That that is that is the truth. But mm -hmm. I didn't think that. Uh, yeah, that it was affecting men that way. And then when they blow up, we do say that. Oh. He and his mom, he got mommy issues, he got daddy issues, you know, or he acting like a bee. Is we say mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. Listen, I'm I'm putting it out there. We say it. And really, mm -hmm. we pushed him and pushed him and he packed. And mm -hmm. he just like, listen, he blow it out and then we can't handle it. Wow, that's something. All right, so I gotta get my language together. 
feel like I'm on I'm, I'm on the couch tonight, Dr. Dot. Are you are you dropping dimes over here? I'm just trying to find out. You Hotel California says, as a nurse, as mm -hmm. I nurse, I can attest it happens more than you think. Couples yeah. who have been together a long time passing away within hours. Okay, yeah, that, that, that about that, but that I, I would probably still say it does happen, but it's it's, yeah. it's not the it's not as much it's, it's not, not nearly enough as much as uh living that way would be uh profitable. You're right, you're right. <laughs> but thank it you for that. Happen. And usually happens to couples who've been together a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, 40, 50 years that they, they they just it's hard for them to live past, but it does like, happen. Like but heartbreak, usually, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but usually someone dies and you leave your, your mate stays and has to live past right living. Yeah, yeah, that's what usually happens. Yeah. So another yeah. thing, let's let's flip a little. Um oh, you got me spinning over here because you talk about black women, and one thing black women don't like mm -hmm. is when black men tell us things. That we know we're doing. Ah, it eats us. Mm -hmm. from, it eats us from the inside out. Real talk. Real talk. So um, you told me something tonight, and I got to work on it. Got to definitely work on it. So okay, what about okay relationships? So relationships tend the whole gamut. Your intimacy with your with your mate and your children, and and I've I've seen where a lot of times there's been, uh, you know, when the children come, there's a the mother either or the father feels disconnected because of the children. So is, 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 is that something that is a problem in our community and does, and how does that manifest? To the, I, I'm to not sure if I followed you. Could you say that one more time? Okay. So, you know, you have this amazing relationship and then the pregnancy comes and, and the child comes and either it's planned or unplanned. And then there becomes a, a, a focus more on the child than on the relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, you know, you get a little dissension in a relationship because now you have this new being that you're raising and mm -hmm. that you're sacrificing for. And also you're sacrificing the time with your mate. So mm -hmm. does, it, it, does that a, a lot of times to we see a lot of relationships ending quickly? Uh, um, I've seen a lot. Some relationships, they have children and relationship is over. Um, but when they were together, just them, it seems like they they were more. Um, Mm -hmm. likely to stay together i don't know i mean i've seen it yeah um i can't remember the song but now i said it damn i'm jealous of my newborn sucking on my la lady's titty or something like that right yeah i can't remember exact verse but if y'all know it put it in the put it in the comment section put, put it in the, the chat. chat section right but right. um definitely i think it's a real thing yeah and i also think that's coming from a place of trauma as well a lot of brothers struggle with trauma um, in mm -hmm. our community, especially um, when I find a woman, that woman now has to become my mommy because I, I'm looking for that love that I never had before. Mm -hmm. And now I have to share that love with somebody else. And, and as much as um, that may seem strange, it happens. And it happens um, more than what we would like it. It happens, yeah. Be because there's a level of jealousy there, right? Right. And and you see it lots of times in even um relationships with um a little different than what you're 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 posing here, but you often see lots of times when people come together with um uh, or, or like like um kids they already from had, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. children before, kids. and you yeah. and you see a lot of you see it both ways, women and uh come in and like he's I, I want to go to the movies and. And like then in their 30s and 40s, they like like and people have children. They're like, look, I can't look. One of my standards is I can't have children. And it's yeah. like, OK, you're you're 40 and 50. That's not and, a smart you, know, standard. <laughs> you know, and the fact is, I don't want to have to compete for that time. Mm -hmm. You know, so then we limit ourselves to potential um, partners. And I say, well, you know, I'm not saying and I don't say you shouldn't have any level of standards, but the reality is why you should ask yourself why don't you want that um children is it because those children are going to take a lot of work is it because of you don't want to uh you know you don't want to share your time whatever it is is there a way to work around that is that person willing to work around to make sure and and, and really um honor your wishes to have enough time but the problem also is when i've been through trauma i want all of the damn time 
And that's why I struggle with this idea of love languages, which I think is it doesn't work in our community much, because I think when, when we're talking about this generational trauma that comes down from our, uh, um, us, our, our ancestors being enslaved in America, what happens yeah. is we have been robbed of these connections many times with our own parents. And hence, we never will get enough because that trauma has caused a hole in those buckets that they speak about. So those five love languages, you think mm -hmm. about it. I created, I created a, a, a pictorial of it. And I said, these are the five love languages. Um, uh, what is it like time and uh, acts of service and yeah. these. So the, I put five buckets and I put holes in the buckets and water is run as much as I put in it as fast as it runs out. Yeah. Because that's what trauma does. Trauma creates these holes in us, especially Ooh. if they haven't healed. And then once you try to fulfill, yeah. fill the bucket up, that yeah. we never really patch the hole, so the person never can get enough of. He know I like acts of services, and he know and she know I like uh a quality time. Well, how much time is quality time? You know, <laughs> and, and and so it becomes an issue because. It, it comes to issue. And, and, and let me go back to the, the initial thing. So this brother who, who who's, who's struggling with this newborn or even the sister, you know, who maybe mm -hmm. not even feel as attractive anymore because her body has done some things, which is a part of this culture that we live in. Yeah. Uh, that says that you have to live look a certain way when you're 50 and 40. And we still living by these fictitious, unrealistic, delusional standards. And, I, and trauma causes us to be very delusional. Wow. And we, and that's just, we're very delusional, deluded, obnoxious, entitled. Mm -hmm. It causes that little boy or that little girl in you to come out because you're, you want the love that you never had. I want the care that I never had. I want that's the friend right. that I never had. That right there is serious. Y'all put it in the chat. Not a, 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 about Nas. Not a worry in this world this far, but wait a minute. We both need your mother's attention. Must be crazy jealous of my own baby infant. Kind of ah, crazy. Ah, shit. Thank you, brother yeah, John. Thank you, brother John. Thank Throwing you. them bars out here. Yeah, the book of rhymes. Yeah, real talk. That that it, that happens. And not only that, I had a friend say, um, da, she's divorced. And she's looking to, uh, and she doesn't want anybody who has a child younger than her youngest, which is 11 or 12 or whatever. So, cause she, she don't want to start over. So you understand what I'm saying? So I'm hearing that from divorce, divorcees who are getting back in the dating pool. These, these we have multi-layer relationships because people, you know, relationships are changing. Divorcees are out here. Uh, you got older folks who've never married, who are chronic daters. Hey, hey, can we back up for a second? Sure. I, I'm thinking maybe, Ja, was that the beginning of the uh, verse uh, when you say, hey, yo, I ain't you because all I do is smile and things come your way. Such an innocent child is the way, is is what same, some, some, I'm sorry, some say, I'm looking at the wrong, um, I get upset because I just want to be treated the way you are, like a star. Wow. Not to worry and not a worry in this world thus far. But wait a minute, we both need your mother's attention. Must be crazy, jealous of my own baby infant. Kind of crazy. crazy. That's a bars right there. That's why Nas is a genius. <laughs> That's and you, bars. yeah, and it, it's, it's real, <laughs> right? I, I remember hearing that so long ago. Yep. I mean, I was a young man when I heard that. And I had a child, um, maybe that came after that, or maybe uh, I can't remember when that. Probably after that, right? Mm -hmm. But I, but my wife and I, we had our youngest when we were like 20, 21, something like mm -hmm. that. And um, and, and and literally, if I had to say, if I had to do anything over again, I would do it the same way. Really? No, I don't. But look, I'm telling you the truth because the reality is, I never like because we have to look at the problem, and. I never had to worry about certain things like my family is going to make sure that I'm taken care of and that we are taken care of. Mm -hmm. Right. My father, even when my son was on the way, right. I was working. I was a young brother. I think I was working at the Sheraton hotel and my wife was pregnant and I was telling my father about how these people were treating me at this place. My father said, mm, don't worry. Quit. He said, in fact, go get fired. <laughs> He said, go get fired. 
it, you animal. know, yes. Yeah. So I went, so I, I I went and got fired. I let all the stuff out. <laughs> and, but he told me also, you know, I let it all out. I mean, all the pent up emotions. I was talking about all types of stuff that probably no way they didn't expect it to come out of my mouth because there was a lot of interesting things going on in that hotel. Um, two sisters had a relationship and they weren't supposed to have the relationship that were in power. Right. So nonetheless, I let it all out at that point. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like 20. I had fun. You put it all it out all, there. I let it all out. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say what I let out. I mean, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll probably be sensitive in taking off the off of these radio streets and these state. You, you snitched. I, you snitched. No, I'm sorry. No, I didn't snitch. I let them know I knew they was doing what they was doing. <laughs> and I probably put some very choice words up in there. Wow. But my father said, it don't matter if you did it or not. I got you. So what I'm saying is we have to look at our community in different ways. And we can't continue to follow these models that don't work for us. Yes. You understand? We follow models that have, weren't created for us. In fact, we can't even do it the same. Mm. So what I'm saying is if we can enrich in uh, 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 the family system, uh, and, and sometimes that just takes, a, takes looking at the family in a different way. Like we we believe in this whole idea, which now we're beginning to know is not true. Is like when you 18, you gotta get out of my house. That's a bad idea. You understand? Like, I'm no. never gonna make my children, you know, to the best of my ability, feel like my house ain't their house. Yes. You understand what I'm trying to say? You know, I might uh, you know, give them some standards and some things like that, but I'm not gonna continuously say this is my house and this is my house. You got like like look after you get to that point, you realize you're being abusive. And and what it is, you're trying to get them to change something. So you're trying to put fear in them in a way. And you ain't putting them out nowhere. But that's what older parents do. The older parents, they did that and, and be independent. I just think that children should be in your house as long as feasible. You share the house as they become adults. But I think we, we've been in this Eurocentric model, brother about, mm. you know, pushing out to independence. And I think the folks who tell us to push our children out, they don't do that. They, they don't or they have enough capital to do something else. Yeah. Yes. They have a different model. Yes. And you said something this now. I want to bring that. It was so poignant. You said we are following a model that we can't even apply the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's so true. Like we follow this Eurocentric model and it doesn't work for us the same. And mm -hmm. then we and then we wonder why we have the chaos in our community. Yeah, we're picking up, we, we, the, uh, you know, the sisters, I appreciate them. They they work really hard and do what they have to do. I think, though, um, and I appreciate and I really appreciate it, but we have to do something about the way that they see their upward mobility to a degree. I mean, to be honest with you, sometimes you ain't even doing all that. You got a college degree. I mean, like, it don't mean you're making no money. Like, let's keep it a buck. Like, it don't mean that you even doing better than homeboy who on a trash truck. You but know what I mean? Status. But, it's the status in the society, though. That's that's why they're doing it. Right? Yeah, and that's called diluted. Dilution. You understand? That's yes. called diluted. But but we are in a particular region of the country where sisters do make six figures pretty yeah, often. We do. You understand? So so we have to really look at that as well. I mean, look, we can't even like get into money. that right now. Yeah, yeah the I money. Mean, and, and, about, yeah. and I and I see a lot of sisters who really try to do their best too. But the brothers have to now rewire their minds because the sister be trying to really like look, not make him feel a certain way, but yeah. his insecurities around him make her making a some a couple thousand or some tens of thousands more than him get in the way. Yes. And then what then what happens is he starts to really be so insecure about that that at some point she tell him tell him to get out. <laughs> and then he said, I should never move then. And all this, time, so I what I'm saying is, we look, Sister Queen, we're gonna have to save something for the next show. I yeah, know it's 8 50, is, is we almost there? It's like 8 56. Is there anything in closing that we want to talk, talk, talk on? Well, we, we want to say this is the introduction to something, so, so, some real great conversation. We're gonna do this on every second and fourth Wednesday. So mm -hmm. we're just introducing some of the topics, you know, relationships between two people, but there's so many relationships, relationships you have with your employment that that your job is more important sometimes than your family. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we have relationships with our children. It's so, it's so many relationships that we're going to explore that is for our community. If we're going to build our community, we got to look at things differently. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I think that we've been so acculturated 
and, and our mindsets. And we, like you said, we're following this model that's not sustainable. It's, it's not sustainable. Us. It's, it's not, not working for us. We see it every mm-hmm. day. And we act like it's not happening. We still striving for this and strive. And mm-hmm. and I think what we got to look to and put into our conversation, Da, is how we are being pitted together, pitted pitted um, um towards each other. Like mm-hmm. black women are making more. They're giving us more spaces to do that, and mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. they're holding men in certain spaces, and 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 that's that's intentional. And yeah, we're absolutely. we're poking our chest out like we're smarter mm-hmm. than men or we're better than men. We're not. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. this is this is an intentional movement to keep our families and our communities fractured. Mm. It's to keep our, keep us fractured. So we got to look at all of these things. So this is just an intro, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, yeah, and 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 the interesting thing is, on a psychological level, many of us understand that on a on a on a conscious level. On a conscious but, level. But yeah. but 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 this but these on a on a very culturally entrenched level. Yes. You know we. we our emotions take over when Real things well. go down, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want, you know, and that's when we start saying things that we say we would never have said. That's mm-hmm. when we start doing things that we say we would never do. Exactly. But also, the brother, like, like we got, we got to figure out how to do this thing together. You understand? We got to yeah. understand. We got to figure out how to do this thing together because what's happening is we're being triggered by each other's emotions or our, our each other's emotional. Uh, 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 immaturity in a sense, if I can say, right? Um, and, and people always say that women are more emotionally intelligent. I don't agree. No, I don't. I just think they're on two different sides of the spectrum. Oh, uh, we definitely need some more time. So, 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 so <laughs> I, because if you don't, if your emotions get to have you say anything and do anything, and his emotions, he can just cut off from them. You, y'all got to kind of meet in the middle and kind of kind of come to this center we got to do this my yacht we got to do this homeostasis we got to be able to control what comes out of our mouths we got to be able to control what does it saying some things brothers sisters we got to control what we say saying some things yep (laughs) yep you're right you understand so i'm not with this whole idea of the tapping into these emotions and men are robbed of emotions so women have been robbed to some degree as well well, but, the, but the problem is we all have been robbed so we need to stop pointing the fingers and figure out and point it right back at us. And, or maybe we should take the lead. Look, look at the other person and say, he pointing at you and she pointing at you and say, God, that, that might mean that I might have to really consider something. The, I said we play the trauma Olymp- Olympics. Like who gets more, you know, who's more traumatized in these yeah. Olympics. And we both are. So you you keep, don't measure it. Let's find ways back to each other. We got to find pathways back to each other. Because the trauma Olympics don't work for nobody. Yeah, and that comes a, a, a lot of the problem also in our community. And I respect feminist women, is especially I, res, I respect black women is per se strongly. But what I'm mm-hmm. saying, I even respect feminist perspective to some degree. There's a lot of racism in there, right? As right. well. But right. what I'm saying is this: um, part of the problem is that relationships and domestic violence and all types of things are really dictated. The theory around it comes from this feminist theory. And this feminist theory comes from Eurocentric woman. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying it doesn't have no legitimacy in their own reality. But what I'm saying is and suggesting is that it comes up short for our reality. Yeah, it's Eurocentric and it's racist in a lot of ways, yes. It, it, it is, but it it, is. let's say it may work for them. But what works for them doesn't mean it's going to work for us. It, it doesn't mean that we can't take certain pieces out of it because feminist uh, a theory has some very good things in it. But okay. it, but we often overlook some things too, and how the um, I, you know, I can't even think about the, the the term at this point. But you know, the the suffrage, I think it is. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 yeah, that whole ideology and how white women's problems didn't look like black women's problems wasn't the same. In fact, they also uh, uh, tried to um, out black women and, and cut them out or just say, well, your issues aren't as human as my issues. So these aren't real issues. But Sister Queen, you want to close us out? Yep. Listen, guys, every second and fourth Wednesday, we're going to be here on here at eight o'clock. 
talking about issues, not issues, we're talking about relationships. And so we're going to talk about issues. We're going to talk about great things. We, we fill in your toolbox out here. So come mm -hmm. through every second and fourth Wednesday, eight o'clock, YouTube, Black Box Radio. We boxed up and out. Let's get them deuces. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, everyone. Good night. Allow me to reintroduce myself. 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 My name is DOC. Dennis is our wing club. DOC. Dennis is our wing club. DOC. Allow me to reintroduce myself. DOC. Dennis is our wing club. DOC. Dennis is our wing club. DOC. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Dennis. Me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself. DOC. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is DOC. DOC. Dennis is our wing club. DOC. DOC, Dennis is our wing club. DOC, Dennis is our wing club. DOC, Dennis is our wing club. DOC, allow me to reintroduce myself.